Hey guys, um, quick question, if you can help. Um, when I do practice sessions, um, I normally ride for about 20 minutes. Um, fine, no problems at all, and, uh, no arm pump, nothing. But when it comes to races, um, which are my races are only 10 minutes long, um, I seem to get tight arms, my technique goes out the window, I don't seem to ride very well at all. Is there any advice you can give on what to do on practice days? Um, should I be doing the full 20 minutes? Should it be, would it be better to do sort of three or four lap sprints, etc., um, just to try and improve my shorter race distance speed? Uh, if there's anything you can, any advice you can give, that'd be great. Cheers. Bye. Excellent question. Excellent question. And the answer I'm going to give is maybe going to be a surprise to a lot of people. The advice is don't race. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll go way more in depth on that. So the reason that's happening, think about it. You could train, you could do 20s, you could do 30s, you could do an hour long moto. It doesn't matter. When you go out there for a race and you do one lap around that track, you are riding at a pace that is so far above your comfort zone that everything is falling apart. Your body can't handle it. You're not breathing. and I don't care if you're the most fit person in the world, you're going to get tired in a short amount of time, in 10 minutes, in five minutes. You have to, and this is my plan, I don't know exactly how to implement this and hold people accountable for this just yet, but I'm gonna figure it out. When I have a training facility, there will be certain days that we do motos. On our moto days, I'm going to make it a point to have everybody operating on a percentage-based system based on the amount of consecutive seat time that they've had. Maybe they're coming off of an injury. Maybe uh, any factory that you can possibly think of. No matter what skill level they are, no matter how long they've been riding, if they took a three-day weekend instead of a two-day weekend, if they're only on the bike one day this week instead of five. And then you're given a percentage for if you're a little sick, if maybe you're really sore and you're not feeling that great, your percentage will fluctuate. You have to operate within that percentage. If you're on at the practice track and you're feeling the flow, you can do 20 minute motos, no problem. Your technique feels like you're actually hitting your marks and, and keeping the riding clean, yet you're probably riding at 60 to 70%. When you go to the race and you say everything falls apart and you're getting tired instantly, it's because whoop, I've accidentally gone right to that 100% mark. And let's face it, unless you're riding five days a week and only doing motocross 100% of the time, you should not be racing at 100%. I think I've mentioned this maybe on the podcast last year. I had three weeks of pre-season prep before Supercross began. I was operating consciously at 65%. So what that means is that if I'm out on the track, 65% could put me, put me in 10th place. It could put me in dead last. It didn't matter. I wasn't going to go beyond that because if I did, I was tired instantly. I got arm pump instantly. Uh, I would make mistakes. and then things start to get dangerous when you're making those mistakes and riding on the edge. And that was only at 65% in a professional supercross race. So you either have to just be the most accountable, conscious person ever in your perceived effort and stay within that and really do a good job of trying to calculate what that is based on how many times you rode that week, how comfortable you are riding at what speed and stay within that or not race at all. Because let's face it, most people are not that accountable and when that gate drops they do some silly things because the problem is when you're building especially when you're building technique you cannot at any point ride a hundred percent because now we're all we're doing is executing bad habits and reinforcing bad habits and we're just taking two three four steps backwards and it's frustrating for me to see that and I did the same thing for years and years because I didn't understand, oh, when the gate drops, yeah, I'm competitive and yeah, I want to do well, but I don't always have to go balls to the wall. You know what I mean? And especially if it's not your job, 
don't. If you want to just race for fun, great. Race for fun. If there's 30 guys on that line and you rode that week and did 20 minutes and felt like you were operating pretty well 20 minutes at 65 to 70%, stick with that 70 percent on race day and if you end up mid-pack well just you end up mid-pack and that's just it, it is what it is uh that's a very long-winded answer but I, I that's what i plan to do at the facility i'm going to create that system somehow i'm going to hold guys accountable to it every single day because if not then you're going to have let's say our 40 people that are training at this facility full time you're going to have 40 kids go out there and I'm going to say, cool, we're doing a 25 minute moto right now. And everything that we've worked on for the past, however long is going to go out the window. If you don't give them a percentage to stay under. Yeah. Cam. Well, you and advice? I had talked I like this. We've talked about this forever, but one day we're going to make a video. We got to make a video where I go and race for the first time in 10 years. Cause, and like had you as my coach, I think that'd be wicked freaking fun and a good little mini series. I don't know. There's so many things we could do with that. I think it'd be awesome. But at one point we were talking about like, oh, what if we did Daytona? Like, what if we did amateur day at Daytona? And you asked me like, how would you, how would you do it? I'm like, oh, but I, I would have to pick something like my goal for this moto is to keep my feet on the pegs. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and at that conversation, I think it was even on the podcast when we were talking about this, but we were talking more about like results and trying to get results out of your head. But I think it says the same thing as if you go racing and you ride over your head, it's like your mindset's wrong in that race, right? Going with the mindset of something like, I'm, you know what, my goal for this race, I'm gonna keep my feet on the pegs and you'll probably ride better. You know what I'm saying? Oh, almost guaranteed you'll ride better. Yeah. It's a weird thing to think about because you're in a race, but the problem is we're riding dirt bikes. This it is so dangerous and it has potential to be so dangerous that you can't just wing it like that. There has to be a better game plan in place. And yeah, if you're riding and training full time, then great. You can get close to that hundred percent mark and operate there. And that's what the pros are doing. That's what separates, when people ask me, AJ, what separates you between the top 10 guys in the lights class and in Supercross? It's just that they do it every day. You know, I'm, I'm in and out, I ride sometimes, a lot, other times I don't ride for, you know, I'll take three months off for no random reason, because I'm so busy. So it is not humanly possible for me to operate at 100% potential or perceived effort, it just isn't. I recommend you guys try to implement that in your racing and parents if you're listening and you have kids that race try it i know it's a weird thing because you don't want a, a kid to accept defeat or like to settle for a poor result but at the same time i don't think that that's it i think if you're looking at the results you're doing it wrong i think the results should almost like the what place you're getting in the race should almost be completely irrelevant. I really do. And that, that's what's changed about my racing as well. Like the last year, it was no longer really, although there was a lot of external, you know, not pressure, but there was externally, there was a lot of make it, make in Maine, obviously, right? Are we making the main? Are you making the main? How close are you to making the main? How many positions away for you from making the main are you? Like, what's your time? you know, based on making the main. But for me, it wasn't about that. It was just, did I come off the track and did I ride to my potential or, or did I not? It didn't matter what place I was in. And maybe that's just me getting old. Maybe that's just an old guy's mentality, I, maybe. Could be. But Could be. I really think if you guys wanna build and actually progress and not get hurt and stay in this sport for a long time, think about trying out that that system I think it'll work yeah it's for me it's better so than riding 100% and just being reckless right for me it's so funny because I just like don't care I like like yeah. truly I don't care about going fast I like if I were in a race I mean, like what what does it I matter don't. what does it mean to me how well, well I, I do in a race <laughs> like, right I have the same mentality I don't what what I don't care yeah but 
it's not going to benefit me to win or lose. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. Yeah, same. And there's just a feeling. You know when you're, you're reaching potential or not. And I just want to have the feeling of that I've reached potential. And the results don't have anything to do with that. Going fast doesn't really have anything to do with that. It won't feel fast if you're doing it the right way. Like today, I got down to low 101s, where the beginning of last week, I was at like 105s, which is a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. And something clicked. And Jonah and I talked about it, where I felt, I don't know how long I've been here. Let's see, I started training for Supercross November 15th. So December 15th, we're, oh, well, we're six weeks in to training. First three days felt like this, whoop, huge improvement. It was crazy. The last five and a half weeks, it felt like I didn't get any better <laughs> at all, but I was smart enough to not force the issue. And then to the end of last week and today, something clicked. And Jonah, and what's funny is it clicked for Jonah at the same time. Because all of a sudden today, him and I were circulating doing 101s on other ends of the track, but we always watch each other to see, you know, if we're catching each other or not. And I, I, I put in a, a really good lap, come back around to the double out of a turn. He's coming towards the triple going the other way. Every lap in the same spot. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. What, what are our times? And when we pulled off, his mechanic had the times. And he was like, whoa, that was awesome. That was 101s. And him and I looked at each other and we were like, what the, you know, a week and a half ago, we were 105s, 106s, and we felt like we couldn't humanly go any faster than that. And all of a sudden, for some reason today, we're four and a half seconds faster with the same perceived level of effort. Hmm. Just consistent seat time. It's because we've been riding every day and eventually you'll be able to just go faster. You can't expect it to happen when you guys are riding once a week. It just, your progression is going to be so slow. Yeah. yeah. I haven't heard a lot of things about Supercross, too. I'd love to know your thoughts. Just like a lot of people who are getting into Supercross are just like, you just need to ride the track. Just ride the laps. Do the laps on a Supercross track and figure out Supercross. What's your take on that? Well, no, I think that method is good for any, most anybody in most any situation. I think if you're uncomfortable, just keep riding and you will get more comfortable if you if you got a brand new bike and you went on the track and everything feels way too stiff and it feels horrible don't go do one lap and pull back into the truck because then you're going to go back out and do another lap and you're going to be in even in a worse mood and you're going to be even more uncomfortable just keep circulating and you'll start to kind of get into a flow things will work in you'll you'll get comfortable <coughs> with supercross there's truth to that but your technique has to be really good to even begin to to even begin. Yeah, you got to be able to ride the track. But <laughs> like, yeah, well, I th for example, like I was talking to uh, I shouldn't say I was talking to somebody that rides for a factory team, and it's their first year riding for this factory team, and they're from a different country. Yeah, and no idea. I, I have no leads. And they had to ride, They the first day of Supercross, they got thrown out onto the Supercross track and it was just like, okay, well, we're doing this, this, and this for motos today, go. And they got hurt, of course they did. So why wouldn't they, you know? <coughs> because he hasn't learned how to hit whoops. Like, you have to learn, there's very specific things to Supercross, the whoops are one of them. Casing a rhythm section is one of them. Dragon's back, really specific thing, on off section. There's a lot of specific things you have to learn, techniques you have to use. Once you learn those, then yeah, get out there and just keep spinning laps because it's gonna take you a long time until you're comfortable enough to even just breathe. I mean, I still don't, but I, even today I was pretty comfortable and confident in what I was doing, holding my breath three quarters of the lap. Because hmm. it's horrifying and it's never really not gonna be horrifying unless Unless you do it as much as Jet and Hunter do it, and you never take time off ever, then I could see it getting to that point where you watch Jet sometimes and like he's doing a quad quad 
triple onto a table section. And when he triples onto the table, he's scrubbing it hard and like into a whip. And then he purposely lands a little sideways so that he can get the bike off of the tabletop and like land sideways and hit a specific line. And it's just like, what the, how, how is he doing that? I can't but wait the, for Saturday, dude. <laughs> the more I ride, the more I watch that and can process what's going on. I'm like, oh, all right. You know, like I kind of get that feeling of really next level, like comfort back. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this clip and you want to watch full episodes of the podcast and send in video questions of your own, head over to club.themotoacademy.com.